Properties of quadrilaterals, grade D GCSE, level 6 national curriculum, recap. Okay, so what I'm going to go through here is the properties of quadrilaterals, which are four sided shapes, anything with four sides. Now I have a list of, I have some pictures of quadrilaterals here, these are the ones with special names. And we're going to start with the parallelograms. Now the par parallelograms, um, you might think, are this standard shape, which we call a par parallelogram, where they have opposite sides of parallel. And it looks like it's always on a tilt like that. But in fact, all four of these special shapes are parallelograms. The only thing that defines a parallelogram is that the opposite sides are parallel. So this is a true on our standard parallelogram. And we denote parallel sides with arrows, and the matching number of arrows matches the parallel sides. So a rectangle has this property as well. Opposite sides are parallel. And the same thing for a rhombus, and the same thing for a square. So these are all parallelograms, but if they're not um, rectangles, rhombuses or squares, then we call them parallelograms, otherwise we define them by their more um, accurate name. Now, that means that rectangles and rhombuses are parallelograms, and so are squares. Now, a rectangle is a parallelogram, so the opposites are par opposite sides are parallel, where the, right, the corners are right angles. Now, Quite often, um, in fact most of the time, students I teach think that a rectangle must have different length sides. Opposite sides must be different. Well, opposite sides are obviously going to be the same, but uh, it has two pairs of sides that are of different length. That's not true. All a rectangle is is a parallelogram, so it's opposite sides are parallel, with right angle corners. All a rhombus is is a parallelogram where all the sides are the same. Now these two definitions for rectangles and rhombuses are quite interesting because they actually are the same definitions for a square. Or they are part of the definition of a square. A square is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel, clearly. A square is also a rectangle because it has right angle corners and that's what a rectangle ha has. It has parallel sides and right angle corners. But a square is also a rhombus because it also has equal sides. So a square is very special. It is a rectangle, it is a rhombus, it is a parallelogram, it is a quadrilateral. But if all those properties are true, we call it a square. What else do we know about these shapes? Well, apart from the fact that's how they're defined, we could talk about their symmetry, we could talk about whether diagonals cross. It's quite a common theme um, when defining quadrilateral is, is talking about where the diagonals cross. So if I look at a rhombus, look at the diagonals of a rhombus, you will see that the diagonals of a rhombus cross at right angles. And a parallelogram, a general parallelogram, one that's not either a rectangle or rhombus, then this is not the case. They do not cross at right angles. And the same for a rectangle. The rectangles, diagonals do not cross at right angles unless it is a square. So it doesn't always cross at right angles. A square, the diagonals cross at right angles as well. So just like a rhombus, the diagonals cross at right angles. If we talk about symmetry, a rectangle has two lines of symmetry. Um, quite often people get confused with a diagonal line is not a line of symmetry for a rectangle. It has two order two rotational symmetry. A parallelogram has no lines of symmetry, but it does have order two rotational symmetry. A rhombus has one, two lines of symmetry, and it has order two rotational symmetry. A square has four lines of symmetry, vertical, horizontal, and diagonals, and four lines of symmetry, uh, rotational symmetry, order four. Okay, let's move on to the kites and trapeziums. A kite what we would call a kite, a standard kite, um, looks like a, a, a kite you would fly, has um, one line of symmetry and it, its diagonals cross at right angles. So that's one way we can make sure something is a kite, is to look at its diagonals and if they cross at right angles it's a kite. Now one that we don't normally associate with the word kite, although it does look like a stunt kite, is an arrowhead shape and an arrowhead shape is in fact um, an inverted kite. It's a kite where 
the one of the sides has been pushed in. And if we look at the diagonals again, these two lines cross at right angles. It has one line of symmetry. It is a kite. Trapeziums. Um, quite often people think of this shape to be the standard trapezium, which is what, what we call the isosceles trapezium, where all the sides are there. Sorry, you've got one pair of parallel sides, which is what a trapezium has. But you also have uh, one pair of sides at the same length. Now, that's not all trapeziums. Trapezium is only the definition of a trapezium is one pair of parallel sides. The lengths can be anything. So we could have all sorts of shapes that are trapeziums that don't really look like trapeziums. But so long as one of the pairs of the sides are parallel, it is a trapezium. Now trapeziums, uh, standard trapeziums could have no sim lines of symmetry, um, no rotational symmetry, or if it's isosceles, it'll have one line of symmetry and rotational symmetry. Um, or no, no rotational symmetry. So, and the diagonal lines uh, don't cross at right angles. So, there's all the properties of quadrilaterals that you tend to get asked for on GCC exams.